Last night, halfway through our show on Timcast IRL, we received notice of a credible threat, and we were forced to evacuate the building for just over three hours while the police conducted a search and brought out dogs and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm not going to explain everything in perfect detail for security reasons, but we do have a pretty rigorous security apparatus here, considering this is this is actually not the ninth swatting. Um, it's a, there's actually been more than that. So we've had we've had uh, this is the ninth swatting. We've had the bomb squad come out, and there have been other incidents, but our security protocols and uh, capabilities are as such. That typically when it happens, it doesn't really affect us in any way. This time was different um, because the, the, the threat was credible. So around 9, I think it was like 9.08, Lydia gets up from the producing. She, she's, she, you know, Lydia's sitting in the producer chair. She's hand, ca- handling audio and cameras and stuff. And she runs out of the room. And I was like, okay, well, I know what's happening now. The fact that she got out of the room, I knew that it was more serious than normal. Because typically when these things happen, it's just like I'll get a notification and be like, don't worry about it. Um, because the police will respond. We have armed security guards and we, there's no real issue around it. This time, um, I'll put it this way. The, the, the news here is, l- let me give you the, the elevator, elevator pitch version of the, the executive summary. Some crazy person flew from California to the D.C. area, uh, to Maryland, and made an attempt on the life of a Supreme Court justice, Brett Kavanaugh. This man was charged with attempted murder. He had burglar's tools. He had a gun. He had a knife. He had zip ties. The, the plan here wasn't just to, to kill a sitting Supreme Court justice. It was to kidnap. And then who knows what? This man was motivated by the leaked information uh, from Supreme Court about the potential overturning of Roe v. Wade and the mass shootings that have happened in this country. For this, he decided to fly out to Maryland and um, he made an attempt as, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's on the line for sure. It's just over the line of what an attempt is because he never got into the house or anything like that. Apparently the story goes, he got to the front door, or I'm sorry, sorry not, he got to near the house and saw the marshals and then panicked, backed off and turned himself in and said that that's what he was doing. Maybe he was hoping that by turning himself in, he would get a lighter penalty than trying to flee because... You know, he was car- you can't carry these weapons in Maryland. Maryland's extremely strict. Now, having everything he had, burglars, tools, crowbar, something, who knows what, over the top. But anyway, these, these extremists who doxed the Supreme Court justices announced they would be returning to his home. It's just insane to me. After everything we've dealt with, this, you know, strikes particularly close to home. When, when they go to the house of Brett Kavanaugh, someone makes an attempt on his life. And then they come back. These people are terrorists. I'm not I'm not mincing words. I'm not playing stupid games anymore. The goal here is to terrorize a Supreme Court justice into giving them the rulings they want. They dox his house. Someone tries to murder him. They return. You know what that means. Now, when I say close to home, it's also uh, literally Brett Kavanaugh doesn't live that far away from where we are. We are in we are in uh, Western Maryland. And uh, Brett Kavanaugh is in Central. I mean, it's the D.C. area, so it's not like I'm revealing anything, you know, particularly private. No, everybody knows that they they live just around the D.C. area. So it's relatively close. It's close enough. So when we got this threat, the first thing was for our security uh, team to assess it. And there were some concerns due to the nature of the threat that was more substantial than the previous threats we had received. The other, the other, uh, I'm supposed to be giving you the quick version. Uh, Jeremy Hambly was also swatted. The Quartering, who is a prominent YouTuber, you probably know him. He's got a million plus subscribers. And uh, likely by the exact same person. There were some similarities in how the swattings took place. I believe the swatting of Jeremy Hambly, and I believe Jeremy thinks this too, was due to the fact that while we had evacuated the building, he had sent us like $1,000 in super chats promoting his coffee brand, Coffee. A lot of people were calling him a grifter, and Luke Rutkowski posted the meme where he, you know, it's got the guy like, yeah, now's my chance. Um, I thought it was great. I appreciate the money, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Jeremy previously offered a reward for information leading to the arrest of people who swatted us. 
but I, th- I thought it was it was great. Jeremy and, and many people in the chat were posting memes and it was keeping things going because we were outside for like three and a half hours. So anyway, let's go back to the what was supposed to be the elevator pitch. And then I've got some news for you uh, outside of this. So it was a credible threat. You know, I, I'm looking at this article from the Post Millennial. It says Tim Cast IRL evacuated during live broadcast due to potentially credible threat. And I thought that was dumb to say because um, I didn't want to overhype what was going on. I didn't want to. I don't know. I just I didn't want this to be a big deal. But I'm sitting I'm sitting in this room and, uh, you know, Lydia comes back in, sends me a message. And then I'm, I'm people are talking. So I'm messaging like security what's going on. And then, uh, you know, one of one of our staff comes to the door of the studio. You can see in, when when Ian's talking, you know, I'm walking back and forth and I go out and talk to him. And just based on the security assessment, we are we are instructed to evacuate the building. And I thought about it because, you know, there was the real possibility of me just being like, no way, we're not doing it. We're not going to let this disrupt the show. But the nature of this threat was different. And so I said, we have to get out of the building. I didn't think it was going to take three hours. I assumed that the police had already arrived and that's what, you know, no, they needed a dog. And so uh, we ended up leaving the building, waiting outside for several hours, mind numbingly boring. But this is the this is the thing, you know, with what just happened to Brett Kavanaugh and what happened uh, 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 and now and now what's happening with Jeremy Hambly, things are just getting to it's just escalated to an insane degree. All right, so so that's the gist of the story here. We, uh, if you watch the live stream, I mean, may, I'll just show you this clip real quick. Of, People you know, be what ill so that they it. buy their medicine. Like if the fire department was incentivized to put out fires and they got paid more for every fire they put we out, we have to evacuate the building. You better right. believe that uh, you'd see a lot more fires. You guys, I love you. I think <laughs> we're just gonna leave the, the keep the live stream going, but we have to. Evacuate. So that was it. In the middle of Ian's talking, you can see me walk back in the room. This is where I was told we have to get out, and I thought it was going to be ten minutes. It was like just just get out. Uh, for a few minutes and then talk to the police and then we'd be, we, we'd, we'd be done. But, you know, when we came out, they were just like, no way. You know, look, you can do what you want. They didn't want to go inside um, and I didn't want them to go inside, but we asked them to and they said no initially. Uh, well, the initial advice was we should do a full sweep. I said, OK, I guess. Then they came back and said, look, we're not we, we we're, we're not going to for a variety of reasons I'm not going to get into. And they were just but then ultimately we're like, no, we have to. So again, like the nature of this was was more serious. If you pull up the live stream from last night on Timcast IRL, I think it's just around midnight or so. You can see the the officers are like they walk in the studio because we left the live stream going. So here's what happens after after all this goes down. Jeremy Hambly tweets, SWAT team just left my house. Someone texted them that I murdered my wife with a high powered rifle and was going to kill myself. They deployed the SWAT team. From an anonymous text, they all knew it was a SWAT too. Hilarious. He says, 100% dead serious. You'll be able to listen to the radio calls online, but nothing body cams. Total bummer. We got more tweets from, uh, from Jeremy. Uh, someone said, did you at least give all the nice officers some free coffee for having to go out to your house? He says, no. I su- no, and here's why. I supposedly murdered my wife. The cops were sitting in my driveway when dispatch called me. My effing wife answered the phone. They should have stood down at that moment not handcuff me and lay me in the wet grass and scare the ish out of my wife. All of this from an anonymous text message. There's some information I can't re- reveal about what happened to us, but it seems like it was the same person. It, it, it happened like right after we got cleared. Likely the same person. The evidence we've had over what's been going on. So here you can see the quartering says only a fraction of the response. You can see several officers are standing. It's probably his ring doorbell camera or something. The, the information that we have right now suggests far left. It suggests far left for a variety of reasons. But I recently made a tweet saying that they were grooming your kids. And I have never been reported more for a tweet. I got like five notifications or something about being reported in Germany, which, which typically means like they're spam attacking you. It's, it's pretty serious. So the quartering gets swatted as well. And this is this is. I, I do not see how we resolve this. La- uh, I mean, like as a country. Last night on IRL, we were talking with Tommy Altman, who's running for office. Uh, we were talking about 
the, the, the conflict. We were talking about Brett Kavanaugh. And the question was, how do you de-escalate? And I said, you can't. You can't. How do you de-escalate this? One random crazy person is all it takes to create insane disruption. Now, what are the solutions? Mass surveillance? No. But that's what they'd have to do to stop someone like this. Well, if you're not going to, then what happens? A single individual can throw a wrench in the spokes to disrupt the lives of millions of people. I don't mean millions of people here. I mean, with Twitter, with making phone calls in in big cities. You know, we saw crazy stuff happen with even CNN being evacuated in the past. I don't I don't I don't believe that there is a way back from this. There was a let let, let me let me jump to this news. Okay, check this out from TimCast.com. Pro-abortion protesters show up at the home of Justice Kavanaugh hours after man arrested for failed assassination attempt. This is terrorism. These people are committing federal crimes. Why aren't they being arrested? Because Merrick Garland doesn't care. And that's why I say there is no de-escalation. It is a violation of federal law to protest in front of a judge's home in an effort to sway their opinions. It's literally what they are doing. And the organization published their home addresses or an approximation of it, resulting in people easily being able to access the information. A man then was arrested and charged with attempted murder specifically over the exact issues that they were protesting. So they said, let's go back. And where are the federal authorities to arrest them? There is, there is not going to be any kind of reconciliation because the federal government will not enforce the law. And if the federal government will not say, this is our red line, you are nuts then this is exactly what you can see happening pre-Civil War in the 1860s. The South kept saying the federal government will not enforce the laws of Congress. Granted, they were, they were really awful laws. I mentioned it on the show. Fugitive Slave Act. The federal law was that if a slave escaped the South, then the North had to return them. And they wouldn't do it. Now, here's the thing. I agree with them not doing it. It was the right thing. In this instance, I don't agree. These are people showing up to the private homes. The Washington Post, the Independent, actually several liberal publications said, stop doing this. There was an excellent article by one reporter. I think it was like New York Mag. I read it the other day. And he said, we cannot allow this because it will lead to political violence. It was a liberal guy. And I said, bravo, man, bravo. You see, The South was angry because they said if the federal government will not enforce the law that we all agreed upon, then we have no agreement. If you and I come together and say we're going to pool our money together to buy pizza and then you steal the pizza. I'm like, okay, you avoided our agreement. Imagine you and your roommates. You all agree. We're going to live together. But we have to share responsibilities like Monday and Thursday. I'll take the garbage out Tuesday and Friday. You take them out on weekends. We'll figure out the Wednesday. And then one dude just never does it. And you're like, we all agreed that if we were going to live together, you have to do this thing. And then one day this guy shows up and he takes your pizza or whatever, saying I am allowed to do it. You're just going to be like, dude, you take my stuff. You don't agree on the rules that we've talked about. Why are we here? And that's the question. Now, in the case of the first civil war, you have an interesting question about immoral activities, atrocities, slavery, right? And you have a noble and just refusal to to abide. And uh, it led to some crazy things. John Brown walking up to a dude, just shooting him in the face. Wow, man. So here we are. Brett Kavanaugh just had a man plan and go to his house. He didn't get to his house. He was going to his house, confessing to what sounds like an assassination attempt. These people decide to show back up. And you know what? Fine. They're terrorists. 
They are trying to terrorize a sitting federal authority in an effort to win political power. Terrorism. Yeah, we get it. And Merrick Garland has done nothing. The, the, the attorney general has done nothing. The marshals did not arrest these people. The feds are not arresting these people. At what point, when you see people like me in the quartering experiencing this, and I'm pretty sure Jeremy was swatted before, this is, you know, a lot of people say, what is this like the eighth time Tim's been swatted? No, I'll be honest with you guys. It's like the 12th or 13th. We just don't publicize every single incident, and they typically don't impact us. However, when we're forced off the show because of a credible threat, and I will, I will stress, partly why I'm just so angry, is that one of the things that made the threat credible was this. These terrorists in Maryland, we do the show in Maryland. It is not that far away. It's relatively close. So when that happens, and I can't reveal much, much more information, but it was credible, then we have no choice. So because of it, we're moving to West Virginia, upping our security to an absurd degree, constitutional carry state, I can only imagine it's going to get very, very bad. I'm, I'm so pissed off about this. When, when they first came to the houses, I said, arrest them. And these ridiculous people on the left were like, I can't believe Tim would support the police arresting people. I'm like, dude, we draw a line so that we know what's too far. We say you cannot protest in front at the homes of judges. That's OK. That's, that's a good line. You can't do that. Justice comes first. You cannot have free speech if you don't have justice. And that's why we're like the, 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 the precedent is. How can we issue rulings defending rights to free speech if the judges are being swayed? I said arrest it. Why? Arrest these people. You'll arrest them. They get a slap on the wrist. They go home. They don't come back. But because they didn't do that, the escalation occurred. And a man showed up with zip ties, a gun, pepper spray, a knife, burglar's tools. And then he confessed. Because nothing happens to the protesters, that's the line. The man gets arrested. OK, that's the line, they say. OK, that's the line. That's it. The protest, protesters come back. And now because of this, because the federal government, because Merrick Garland isn't doing anything about it, we face those ramifications. So we have to leave Maryland for sure. We've already moved a lot of our operation over. We're just waiting on the new facility to be completed. The construction should be happening at some point. And I'm just pissed off because, I'm, you know, we shouldn't have to live this way. The reality is I get it. This is how life is. You want to go back 200 years and you're sitting in your house minding your own business and all of a sudden someone starts screaming, you know, they're, they're more than two. Let's say 250. The regulars are coming. They're marching down the street and you're like, ah, here we go. And then you got a bunch of regulars showing up and they're coming in your house and they're sleeping in your house and they're eating your food and all that stuff. And you're like, I can't live this way. I mean, the reality of life is that, you know, what was that? What was that line from Assassin's Creed? Nothing is true. Everything is permitted or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't think that's it. But something I think I think, you know, the reason I bring that up is I think about the idea that everything is permitted. People need to understand that man's law only goes so far as man's willingness to enforce it. And if the law right now prevents you from going to a judge's home, the law prevents you from swatting people, then here's the reality. They will not enforce the federal crimes that took place in front of the judge's houses, which result in an escalation. They are completely incapable of enforcing the law against those who have been swatting me and many others. And then you realize if it can't be enforced or won't be enforced, then it will happen. And people like to talk about what's 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 possible and what's law. And I always I always thought this was funny. The only law that is true is the natural law. I can't jump 20 feet in the air. Sorry, that's just reality. That's the law that matters, the law of nature. I can build a machine to help me jump 20 feet in the air. I better build a machine that can withstand the landing, too. Otherwise, you're going to get hurt. So the so the, the, the you, you can't. You know, a human is not going to levitate like Superman or shoot lasers from their eyes. These violate natural law. And you can you can assert your, your right to do it, but you can't. 
machines that would accomplish an approximation of such don't violate the natural law. They find a way within it. It's a loophole around natural law. I want to I want to fly. Well, you build the machine to fly. That's well within the, the rules, well within the law. In man's law, we say you can't do this and then they don't enforce it. So people do anyway. You can. You shouldn't, but they do it anyway. This is sickening to me. You know, I see the only end result here is conflict, crisis, civil war, who knows what. Maybe these justices seeing no enforcement of the law are going to be scared. There's two potential things. One of the reasons the Supreme Court often is toothless, and they really are, is because they have no enforcement capability. You know, we were talking, I think it was Will Chamberlain who talked about this on Timcast IRL. They, if they issue too broad of a ruling, too strong of a ruling, and then everyone says no, then it's revealed the emperor has no clothes. The Supreme Court can only enforce what is already culturally, you know, was already on the line of culturally acceptable. If they issue a ruling that changes too much, people will ignore it and it will expose them as having no ability to do anything about it. If right now it is illegal to be in front of their houses and the federal government won't do anything, boy, are they exposed. The Supreme Court can do nothing. They can't even protect their own homes. So maybe one of two things will happen. The justices cowering in fear will just give these extremists what they want and hope it goes away, considering there's no enforcement capability. Or maybe it goes the other way. Maybe the Supreme Court issues a broad ruling on constitutional carry based on the, the lawsuit in New York and says, these people came to our homes. We should not have to go to the government and beg for permission to protect ourselves. Maybe Justice Kavanaugh, he's fearing this, might be like, people need to have the right to bear arms. Because I'll tell you this, with what we've dealt with, with all these security threats, with what I've dealt with, with even trying to go outside, people need the right to keep and bear arms. We've had armed security. I've had people show up to events and they're like, you know, just so you know, I have a gun. I'm like, oh, thanks. Thank, thank you. I like it when someone who comes and, and, and is working with us or I know is armed. I'm like, good. More people should be. I want people to have that right. Here's the reality for you guys. There's a story about Donald Trump. He only eats fast food, they say. You know what that is? They say he's a germaphobe. He's not. He only eats fast food. This is, what, this, is, this is what they told the press on these planes when Trump is eating McDonald's. Why is he eating McDonald's? To seem American? No. When you go to a fast food restaurant, when you go to McDonald's, you can see the Big Mac has already been made. It's sitting there in the warmer. When you order at a fast food restaurant, a Whopper or a Big Mac, they already made them. So they're not, they've not been tampered with. If you order a specialty like no tomatoes, they have to make it from scratch. So it usually takes a little longer. If they know who you are, like Donald Trump, they're going to do something to it, aren't they? So if Trump goes to a sit down restaurant and he says, I will have the truffle risotto, please. They could spit in it. They could put garbage in it. He doesn't know. I have to deal with that. People don't people don't get that. You know, it, it really is crazy. The, the people who don't understand the sort of Damocles, this idea, the people who desperately want fame and attention and notoriety, when, when, when people mention that it is a double-edged sword or it's not worth it, yo, there's a period where, you know, some people might rec recognize me sometimes. I'm at a period uh, uh, where I get recognized everywhere. You know, I go outside, I go to a restaurant, people are like, yo, and they're all excited. You know what that means? I don't know if they like me or don't like me. I don't know if they're in the cult and they're these psychotic extremists who would go in front of these homes. So when I go to a restaurant, I order food. What do you think that means? It means that the people there might not like me. So how do I order food? Isn't that nuts? People don't, people don't understand that. They say, oh, you're being paranoid. No. No, this is reality. That if someone says they know you, if someone says they know me, they're probably a fan. But if I'm in New, when I'm in New York, people drive by screaming, F you, Tim Pool, because we are in this political, this culture war, this conflict. People are nuts. So what do we do? I have no idea. I go out to eat all the time. What am I supposed to do? Have someone go in 10 minutes beforehand and order for me, and then I'll come in and sit down? 
or sit down somewhere else, order something, and then switch, hire a food taster. And then I'm not, I'm not even at Brett Kavanaugh's level. What do you think Brett Kavanaugh does when he goes out to eat? Do you think he can just go to a restaurant, order food, and think it's going to be okay? People don't think about this stuff. They don't realize this. They think being famous is having everyone, you know, love you and, and, and going out and, you know, they're like, oh, I'm a big fan. You're like, thank you. And signing autographs and taking pictures with people. No, I, you know, it is what it is. It comes with the territory, but this is the reality of being in the fray. People often wonder, like, how do you get to a point where you're doing the work that I'm doing? And I, I've often talked about it. You decide to do it. That's really it. That's all it is. You decide to be involved. I decided this. I get it. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm just going to point out that I wish we would enforce the laws. Maybe it could prevent some of this stuff. But if you want to be involved in this world, you want to be involved in the conflict, it really is as simple as choosing to be. I went to Occupy Wall Street. I went to Occupy Wall Street and I got involved in the political fray where people were challenging ideas, where they were protesting, where they were standing up. I just went there and did it. Anyone could. I, I, each and every one of these people have, has, has involved themselves. You just have to decide you want to. And I tell you this, man, it's not all it's cracked up to be when you, when you, when you, when you start getting to the top or whatever. I certainly think in order to make the world a better place, you have to. And so as much as I can say it comes with the risks, it comes with rewards. Don't get me wrong. Like we're doing really well. It's no secret that, you know, I've done well for myself. Tim Cass is a successful company. But with that territory, it comes the very serious risks to your life. And maybe you'd be better off making, you know, just under six figures or six figures, remaining anonymous, but having an impact and uh, being able to just live your life. Maybe. It's up to you, I suppose. I think it's, it, it's difficult for me to tell people to get involved, to stand up and challenge the system to make the world a better place unless I was doing it myself. So I'll, I'll put it this way. When people say things like, you don't, you don't understand, Tim, like you don't have a family, you don't, you're... that's true. I don't. I mean, I have a girlfriend. Um, I have immediate family like brothers, sisters, a dad, a mom. Their safety is at risk, especially, you know, my brother works with, you know, works here, works with, with us. But let me just explain. When, when I talk about how it's difficult to stand up and challenge the system, the risk to your family, I understand. If you've got kids and you've got to feed them, it is scary. But look what's happening now. Baby formula shortages. Perhaps if you spoke up a year or two ago, this could have been averted. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe if you spoke up four years ago, it could have been averted. Maybe if in 2020 you spoke up, Donald Trump would be president and there would not be this very serious baby food, uh, formula shortage and your kids would have food. You see, people like to think that the risk is only immediate. If I lose my job, I won't be able to buy food. The risk is that people like Joe Biden are gutting the system. And because of that, you don't have food. Now, I may not have kids, but I'll tell you this. Yeah, I put myself at risk every day deciding to do this job to invite people. And in. we've had people break into the house. We've been swatted over a dozen times. I think we're at like a dozen plus. We just haven't talked about the ones you don't know about. We have had other properties that are not publicly disclosed get swatted because somehow these people find this stuff out. We have had to spend probably what? We're over 100, 100, 100, probably looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars on security. We've had to uh, relocate. Notice I'm in a different building. Funny how that works, huh? Yep. The real risks. They're there. But I think it's worth it. Because I think we need to make the world a better place. And I think maybe the reality is I might experience the negative. It comes with the positive. I got to fly in a private plane a few weeks ago. That was really cool. Private jet. Uh, it was uh, someone I knew was actually traveling in the same direction. And they happened to have had this, uh, this, this, uh, they, I don't want to give away too much information, but they had access to a private, private jet. I mean, that's cool. You know, that was fun. But I'd love to just be able to fly whenever. And the funny thing is when you talk to a lot of these, these wealthy people who have these private, private jets, you don't own them like some people do, but there's like, you can just charter them and it's expensive. But if you charter a jet with like six to eight people on it, it's not as expensive as you think. It might be like a thousand bucks to two thousand bucks per person. 
a lot more than a regular flight. But because of security issues, you end up having to do these things. So I might make more money, allow me to grow the company and to hire people. And then we have to spend that much money on flights and drivers and security, armed guards, dogs, all of this stuff. There's positives. I get to, uh, I don't know, have a nice TV. The negatives, sort of Damocles above your head. But I think the main positive is those things don't necessarily balance themselves out. I don't you know, the, the positives are probably better than the negatives, to be honest. I think that's fair to say. But the, the, the main positive is making the world a better place. Entering the fight, figuratively, in an effort to make it so that other people can live more comfortably and that we can uphold our values and defend freedom, liberty, and personal responsibility. That's the net positive. I want that. I want other people to live freely. So I'm willing to be in that, in that fray. I'm willing to, to face this risk, and it happens. So that's the reality. If you want to be involved, if you want to stand up, there's going to be risks. And maybe if you're scared, you shouldn't be. These people aren't scared. The people who are going to Brett Kavanaugh's house aren't scared at all. They know they're breaking the law. They know it. They know someone just tried to kill him. They know it. They don't care. They're not scared. And therein lies the challenge. I'll, I'll end with this last point. There was a man who had a Black Lives Matter mask on at work at Taco Bell. And they, they said, take it off or you're fired. He said, no. So they fired him. And then he made a video saying, I refuse to back down. So they rehired him. These people aren't scared. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all then.